If you are tired of being pushed into rigid productivity systems that leave you feeling burnt out, check this out. Nadja Bester shares a glimpse into one of the freshest PKM showcases I've seen. It's called the Vaultiverse, and true to the name, it is a universe of information for Nadja, spanning the gamut from life management to writing to running a startup. The subconscious is a well that demands filling, but in a busy life, it's easy to end up on empty, which leads to burnout. Just like the Vaultiverse, Nadja is a bit of everything. A serial entrepreneur, a startup advisor, a player in marketing and communications, consulting for companies that have raised over $300 million, and that's along with being a journalist, nonprofit board member, mom, and an ongoing COVID refugee. Nadja's showcase intrigued me because even with so much going on, she took it in a different direction. Instead of focusing on hyper productivity, she focuses on feeding her subconscious. Is that valuable? Yes, it is. Maybe more than we know. Let's tour Nadja's Vaultiverse now. So without further ado, my homework is where I enter the labyrinth into my Vaultiverse. And it's interesting that in English, we barely differentiate between a labyrinth and a maze. But in essence, a maze has all these different offshoots that could get you lost. Whereas a labyrinth is like a singular path to the center. And that really is what this labyrinth Vaultiverse does for me. Even when it feels like I'm moving away from it, I know there's this, you know, I'm kind of, I always head back to it. And prior to taking the course, I didn't fully appreciate the power of having this kind of true north note. My approach was very chaotic in the sense that I would open my vault and 100% bottom up, I would get drawn into whatever note I happen to see or open or create. And so this really functions as a sanctuary where I can, you know, come here and this is what I do. So the first thing I see is I have these sort of quick start, like a little small hack. And this is really just because I have a varying capacity for noise. So sometimes I am able to get into the vault, you know, kind of click down into things, but often I really just want to see the bare, like the absolute essentials. So I toggle the below based on kind of how I feel and what I want. So this, why am I here section, which is modeled after the, uh, what was it called, what I want. This honors the fact that the Vaultiverse is such an all-encompassing space for me. I enter it for many different purposes, you know, as many different versions, versions of myself. So it really tries to be respectful in helping like different me's navigate kind of what's here and, and what, what it, you know, where I'm at and where I want to go. So the first one, what I do when I get here, okay, so I need direction and then I go to the daily MRC, and this is really just what's important on any given day. And so this is kind of like a MVP for living. So just the bare essentials that I need to get by. When I need to anchor myself, this is where the snapshot comes in. So it helps me get current. So the work MRC is, you know, where the serious stuff goes down. I can maybe quickly go in there. So I kind of have things here grouped by like company, by role, by like industry. So it's very sort of, you know, this is, yeah, this is the serious stuff. And that's not really what I want my showcase to be about, because as you'll see, I really try to make my vault my friend. And that means that as a friend, you know, it's not just work, but it's play as well. So the projects, the courses and my writing, they all feature like past, present and future things that I'm working on, have worked on, will work on. The who am I note, you know, this is a, <laughs> it's like a gel of all trades note for anything me related that I want or need to keep track of. Life by date, I'm not really sure I'm going to keep. I'll quickly just open it. So this is based on how I, or maybe I can show you this instead. So when I do my daily journaling, I kind of link by the year, by the month of the year, by the month itself, and then also by the date of the year, but like by the day of the year. So I like this because I'm able to kind of click into it and, you know, see what I was doing on previous days or months or whatever. So the life by date is kind of the catch all for this, but I don't think I'm going to keep it, but I'm parking it here. And then if there's uptake, you know, whatever, let's see, it's a complete work in progress every day of the year. So uh, the deep dives. Yeah, this is really, uh, <laughs> I like obsessing over things, like really obsessing over something for a short period of time. And then I move on. And so this is kind of here because this is the latest thing that I'm obsessed by. And then once I'm done with it for the moment, it goes into this wake the hungry bear. And that's where it hibernates and waits for me to love it again. 
And yeah, these things can be a huge time suck because like these temporary <laughs> passionate obsessions take up a lot of my time. So I treat them with kit gloves. I also have a different section for permanent deep dives, but that lives in projects. All right, so then if I need support, so this is also here in the quick start. Again, just my wellness MOC, which really is just to you know help me function optimally. The recovery one is when things are not going well and I need like TLC, guidance, support, reminders, whatever. The people MOC, or maybe I can just click into this one. So this is really just something that helps me to people. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff about my son. There's just general kind of, you know, how to deal with other humans. Um, and then there's also like a roller decks of just the who's who of people who are in my life. All right. So feeling inspired. So yeah, the, the previous one ground control was really when I, you know, I need to kind of, <laughs> I need my vault as my friend. The feeling inspired one is like, okay, this, I have all this energy. I want to geek out. Like this is again, a dangerous place because I can really lose days here, but concepts, interests, symbolism, um, they're all very fertile breeding grounds for ideas and connections, which is one of the primary reasons why I use Obsidian in the vault. And then the things I keep track of, that's like random delicacies, like metaphors, analogies, great openings and books that I'm kind of, you know, collecting. Uh, so that's fun stuff. Yeah, then I guess sometimes when I've been too closely involved with the everyday, uh, I zoom out a little bit and I need some perspective. So like the life trademark <laughs> is a, a very fun thing that I've been working on. It's like my theory on living, very creative name, by the way. And so the mindsets one, I mean, that does what it says on the box, um, but it's also something like a cool little learning project that I'm working with my son on. So these things, something that I have to be in the mood for, and I don't really know how to describe that mood, but when I'm in that mood, I know to go there. And then the last one, and this is really what I want my uh, showcase to be about, is for everything else that was not, you know, kind of caught above, uh, there's Pythia. And so, yeah, with that, let's go visit her. So if I don't feed my subconscious, I quickly run into this sort of meaning-making deficit. And in my psyche, that's like similar to oxygen deprivation. So I'm constantly trying out new things, some of which work, some of which don't. But I guess the process, and it's just a good dose of experimentation and play, that's very often the reward itself. So I love clicking on things. <laughs> it's, it's like the digital version of exploring someone else's attic. And I have very fond memories of that, you know, in real life. So my intention is to create this wonderland of randomness discovery, especially in this section. I mean, I have that elsewhere in the vault as well, but everywhere else it's very cognitive. Whereas here it's, you know, all about like intuition and yeah, it's just, I love this place. And so yeah, I do a lot of thinking and creating elsewhere in the Vaultiverse. So Pythia is like this portal into, I don't know, a different world, like stepping through the veil. There's no reason. There's not even a lot of rhyme. There's just like this bunch of chaotic, neutral, like free association and like active imagination. So what I do is when I get here, and it also depends on kind of what mood I'm in. So I can either click here. Wait, let me do the nice view. Okay, so here's a little story, a little narrative that I've written for myself. I sometimes use it to get in the mood. So just to give you a brief rundown, okay, I'm sitting in the library, I'm noticing some details, and then I see this strange looking woman. All right, something tells me a call to adventure, of course, if you know uh, Joseph Campbell's uh, Hero Quest or Hero Journey, something catches my eye and I follow her. All right, so now we get into the meat. So there she is, she's waiting for me. And she offers me a choice of two doors. So I get to choose. And am I an alchemist or a seeker today? So I don't think I'll have time to show you the alchemist. Uh, but just to kind of give you an idea, that's a space that offers more creative constraints. Um, and it relies heavily on like the graph view and linking. So I happen to be in a seeker mode anyway. So all right, now I enter. I see I have a choice, a place or a key, so I go down. Okay, there's four more choices. Very good. So let's see, what do I have time for? So the library of Simbler Simbolandria, I've never actually said that out loud. That is just kind of a 
an easier to digest version of the symbolism MRC um, because I don't want to wander off too much uh, into the cognitive side when I'm here. It's just more for play. So I'm going to skip that one. The mind melt magic, uh, that's fresh off the press. So there's not really that much to show yet. So, okay, so let's do the walk through words. So if I click in here, the first thing I do is I can start with any word that catches my, so let's do genius. And so, okay, now I have a quote and this is, you know, any quote that has caught my attention. And when I put it in here, I link every word. So as you can see, a lot of these words are not yet linked. And that's you know, part of the deliciousness because the next time that I'm in here, then I can, you know, put a new quote for that word. But then one of them at least is, and so I can click into that one. Now I have a new quote and I have all these other links, uh, a lot of which have not been filled. So I can just kind of keep on clicking into different links with different quotes. It's not, the, the, the key here is not really um, saving quotes. I do that elsewhere. And it's not really to understand kind of why I care about this note right now, or, you know, why is it significant to me? It's like an open invitation and anything can happen here. And this is what I, what I really love about this. All right. So let's, I forgot to pin the other one. So let's just go way back. So I'm here. And then the last thing is I'll take you on this weird little ride. Um, and like I said, you know, really just to emphasize, this is so much about play for me. If I start wondering kind of why I do this and what the, what the meaning and the reason is, then I, I lose the charm. So this is usually something I, I just have this random sentence that pops into my head and then I'll make a note. And if I click into this note, like, as you can tell, this was like fridge poetry, this one. I mean, it has absolutely no meaning, but it's just fun. And so if I click into it and then there's another one and then there's another one and it just keeps on going. And every time that I have kind of a new, you know, a new th uh, thought or a sentence, but it has to be a random, it's not something that, that I'm going to work on later on, then I just add it here. Um, yeah, and this, <laughs> this is just a lot of fun. And the reason that I wanted to show this as my showcase is because I think I had for a long time this idea of how serious Obsidian and PKM must be. And I, and I looked for my fun elsewhere. But as I said in the beginning, like I really wanted to make my vault my friend. And so this is part of that journey. It's, it meets me where I am instead of me kind of having to be in a certain mood when I get into it. So yeah, thank you so much for going on a journey with me. Yeah, with that, I shall pause. <laughs> Nadja's showcase is a reminder that there is no one size fits all solution and trying to fit your feet in someone else's shoes is only good for getting you blisters. I don't know about you, but I'm inspired to feed my own subconscious, and now I have a few ideas. Hopefully this showcase gave you some inspiration on how you can do the same. What is something you took away from watching this? Let us know in the comments below, and if you liked it, make sure to like and subscribe. Nadja's showcase is the 12th showcase I've been able to share out of well over 100 from the Linking Your Thinking workshops. There are so many more people I hope to share with you because they show how personal the process of personal knowledge management can be. As always, thanks for tuning in, and until next time, stay connected.